Hello, pet parents. Welcome back to Marcy's Menagerie on 1480 WDJO. I'm your hostess, Marcy Hall Newbolt, and I'm here with my sidekick, as always, and best friend, Nosy the Basset Hound. You know, I can still, I know I told you last week, but I can still make her talk by saying the super secret special magic word. And, 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 and it's not super califragilistic expialidocious. Nosy, Nosy, come here. Nosy, mailman, Nosy, <laughs> mailman. Oh, she's she down the hallway. She wasn't even here for a few. Nosy, mailman, mailman. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I am so excited about this show, this show today. Do you love, or are you like me, and you just love all of the cool animal print and, and faux fur fashions that are in all of the fashion magazines? And would you sort of like to work some of these looks into your own holiday wardrobes, but you don't want to end up looking like you're wearing an entire safari on your back? Well, I'm freaking out about what to wear this holiday season to parties. I mean, even even just to go out shopping, I want to look somewhat festive when I meet people for lunch or go out to, to business meetings. But it's so hard to figure out. You, you want to be festive and, and fashionable, so you don't know exactly what to do, so you end up wearing what's safe, and, well, most of the time that means black. That's what I have on today, except for my animal print shoes. The height of fashion these days is undoubtedly the animal prints. Leopard, zebra, tiger, stripes, and, and faux fur, and, and it reminds me of the song, green alligators and long neckies, monkey back camels. Well, anyway, you turn on the TV and all the fashionable women and, and some of the men seem to have something animal print or faux fur worked into their ensembles. Their shoes, hats, coats, sweaters, scarves, even patterned tights. And I have a pair of those. And I wear them proudly sometimes. We'd all like to try those animal-centric fashions ourselves, but we we still end up wearing what's safe and, and maybe the things that we purchase end up in the closet or in the drawers. What to do? What to do? Well, guess what? Internationally known fashion designer and style guru, the woman who single-handedly started the faux fur revolution a quarter of a century ago, none other than Donna Sawyers of Donna Sawyers Fabulous Furs is sitting right here beside Nosy and me. And she's going to share her personal tips on how to incorporate faux fur and animal print clothing and accessories into your personal holiday and beyond wardrobes. And she'll also be answering your questions. So start dialing in now to 513-749-1480. Again, that's 513-749-1480. Or email your questions to us at marcyhallnewbold at twc.com. And that's Marcy, M-A-R-S-I-E, Hall, H-A-L-L, Newbold, N-E-W-B-O-L-D, at twc.com or you can go to my Facebook page at Marcy Hall Newbold and you can ask questions there and I'll get them to Donna. And also in keeping with the fashion theme I've asked the incredibly talented Linda Ross of Holland, Michigan who's turned her talent for designing and creating clothing for Basset Hounds I, surprise surprise into a, a way to raise money for rescue efforts and I've asked her to call in. She made a holiday ensemble for Nosy and myself, the one that I told you about last week, and I posted photos of Dr. J. Middendorf wearing it. He said, he told Nosy that when she protested that he, he would he even put her outfit on, and, and I've got a picture of that up on my Facebook page. And, and he said it's actually good for dogs to wear clothing because they like the attention, and it's good to have that interaction with their owners, as long as it's something that's not constricting their breathing or or doing something bad to them. So there, Nosy, what do you what do you think? And as always, Bob, the producer Barry, will be here to weigh in on the lighter side of pet ownership in his weekly heavy petting segment. Our telephone lines, as I said, are open now at five one three. 
749-1480. On her way to purchase a full-length mink coat, Donna Sawyers heard a radio broadcast that was describing how kittens were being skinned alive and sold as mink teddy bears. And with four cats at home and fearful that she was about to purchase a full-length kitty coat, Donna resolved to create an animal fur alternative and Donna Sawyer's Fabulous Furs was born. So this was in 1989 and so she started in the basement of her Cincinnati house and she offered a single product, a faux fur coat sewing kit. And I remember these because my best friend Susan Gabbard bought one, bought one of the first ones and actually made herself one of these coats and it was the first thing that she ever sewed. So she had a really, really good good directions, although Susan is a member of Mensa, so she, she could figure just about anything out if, if she put her mind to it. But today, that company that she founded in her basement and is a tribute to animals is the world leader in faux furs. It's a multi-channel company, and they sell globally through catalog, internet, retail, and wholesale accounts. Donna Sawyer's Fables Furs, they are sold in boutiques, hotels, and casinos. Isn't that fun? Throughout the country, as well as by retail giants, Shop HQ, Saks Fifth Avenue, and Neiman Marcus. Fabulous Furs have, and this, this really impresses me, have appeared on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, The Today Show, Miss USA Universe, The View, CSI Las Vegas, Gossip Girl, and dozens of other television shows. Donna's been profiled in People Magazine. I am, I am not worthy. And twice in the Wall Street Journal. She's been honored with the Northern Kentucky Chamber's Image Maker Award. She's an active volunteer. You will see her everywhere. I, I am just, I, I, it sounds like I'm canonizing her and, and, and the heavens are going to open up and, and assume her. But she really is a role model to, to anyone who, who just, they have a vision and, and an idea and they have the wherewithal and, and the, just the, the smarts to, to make it happen for themselves. I, but she's also a volunteer, and I have to tell you, this woman has donated thousands of hours of time. She has donated products. She, you, you call people, call her, and and ever since I've told people that she's going to be on the show, it's just, uh, it's just unbelievable the nice things they've said about her. All right, I'm just going to say, welcome, Donna. I know I've overdone it, but you know what can I do? Marcy, the first thing I'll do is apologize for being a major disappointment after that because I could never, you know, and you know what? Anybody could do what I did. I happened to hear a broadcast, a Paul Harvey broadcast, that was Paul and, I, and I took action. And anybody could do that. It, but I think as much as anything, it's a testament to the American dream. That if you have an idea and you don't mind working, I don't mind work, um, you can probably build a successful business. So, so I've been extremely lucky along the way and just had, like, why would, the, would Jay Leno show talk about us? But they did. And, and you think, I can't believe this. But it, things like this happen. And I, I don't know. I think it's divine intervention. And it's maybe just following a passion and I love animals but lots of people you love animals well but, it was, I mean, it was said it was it. right you were doing it for the right reasons your heart was in it and there is always an element of of luck that something will go your way you know that we're we're at like the sliding doors mm -hmm. um, theory but 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 it, it it has to do with 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 you and your passion and 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 your your just business business acumen. All right, so tell, tell me this. What, what's new and fabulous in the world of Donna Sawyer's oh. Fabulous Furs? I can't possibly. <laughs> what's what's with, been with happening now? He's so darn cute. Oh, she's my girl. She, she wears, she, an, no, she wears the animal prints all the time. Of course. <laughs> and it's not faux. Okay, and I heard you say, Marcy, you're uh, puzzled by what to wear. Well, 
I say wear faux fur. I, I have no problem wearing faux fur. Uh, you know, July sounds like a good time to wear a fur vest to me. But, you know, to me it's, it's, it's sort of a neutral, and, like I'm wearing a uh, faux fur vest and it's sable and it's dark. And um, it's perfect because I drove down in my car and uh, I didn't even sit in a coat. I had a coat in my back seat because I didn't want to sit in it. And uh, so I, I think a faux fur vest is perfect. But there are lots of rules of thumb that will help you uh, pick out the best thing. And I, I think your hair color is a great way to start. So I have dark hair, so sable works really well for me. You have sort of auburn hair. I bet leopard looks fabulous on you. But so would my vest. So uh, if you're a blonde, you know, I brought a catalog with me. And here's a blonde, and she's wearing a teal um, faux fur fox hat. And it's perfect on her, but it's not going to look that good on me because it's just not the color that's flattering. It is, and it plays up the color of her eyes. So yes, the faux furs, yes. they don't have to be natural colors. No, no. And in fact, this year, so we, we, we chose what we thought were going to be the hottest colors, and we do lots and lots of research uh, about a year out. So we, we have some uh, research behind this, but uh, teal, magenta, and uh, burgundy, uh, we felt were going to be really strong colors, and I and I think we we kind of kind of guessed right. Oh, those um, are great. Those are very holiday festive looking. Well, and it it doesn't have to look real. In fact, for some people, the the stranger and the wilder it is, the better, because then. Because many people say, well, I don't want anybody to think that I'm wearing animal fur. Uh, well, this could be animal fur. It would be dyed. It's imitating fox, and it would be dyed. But um, it, it, to me, uh, faux fur is always in style. I have a question from Betsy in Covington on my Facebook page, and she's asking, is it possible to mix animal prints? I usually don't wear more than two furs at a time. Like I have on my sable vest and I've got on a leopard belt, but it's very flat. So I'm very happy to do that. And Nosy, this is your home. You be as noisy as you want. <laughs> 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 oh, I didn't Nosey. want Nosy to get in trouble. No. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, no. joking. She's the, co she's the co-host of the show. <laughs> we always say, Nosy, the magic word, mailman. Could you say mailman? Mailman. Mailman. Mail no, she doesn't want to say it. Mailman. Well, all right. So t tell me about the, the different furs that, that are available. Our, our you know, I bet we have... Leopard and... We have everything. I mean, I, I, I think we must have 35 um, fabrics that would be sable. That's our most popular fabric. You're right. Leopard and cheetah. The, those cat prints are big. Um, black meat. Black mink is so authentic, and often people want something that looks very authentic. And um, you know, I I can re I can remember I do the sales calls, I design the product, I do the publicity, I write the catalog copy. So I I have my fingers in a lot of pots, but I can remember calling on a department store, and the buyer had her. Uh, black mink coat on the chair near her desk, mm -hmm. and I laid my faux black mink on the on top of her coat, and uh -huh. I said, "Oh my goodness, look! You can't tell where your coat ends and mine begins." Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> but you know that's the great thing about faux fur. So, an animal fur may cost twenty thousand dollars. Mine cost five hundred. So, you know there are many. Uh, so you say, well, I don't really worry about animals. Um, I'll choose fake. A and we have plenty of choices for you. Well, we're going to take a break now. I'm Marcy Hall-Newbolt. You're listening to Marcy's Menagerie on 1480 WDJO. Mm -hmm. 